and Sid in the morning. The new show, Mischief and More. 77 WABC and the WABC radio app. So here's what I read in the New York Post yesterday. For a while, it was the number one story on NewYorkPost.com. AOC runs away from opponent Rich Valdez at the Puerto Rican Day Parade, which, of course, Mr. Call Screener for the very, very popular Mark Levin Show. He's got a terrific podcast, uh, TheRichValdez.com. He's at Rich Valdez on Twitter. And I told him, Bernie, I said, listen, we're going to bring you on at 640 because if it's a really good interview, the good news is we can play it again at 940. But if it sucks, it's a one and done. That's it. So, yeah, so, so, so what do you think? You think, you think, no, you think? No pressure, by the way. What do you think? You think it gets replayed at 940? Right before we bring Rich on, what do you think? I would say yes. You say yes, Joe? Yes. Yes. You say yes, Meanie? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. All right. Let's see I if... Slipper uh, asked me, what's the question? All right. Let's see if Rich Valdez <laughs> lives up to the expectations. Here he is. He's going to win the Republican side and beat AOC. It's going to be the shocker of a lifetime. How a good friend, Rich. Good morning, Rich. Hey, good morning, Bernie. Good morning, Sid, Jill, Matt. What's going on, guys? What's up, homeboy? How are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm silent. We're here. We're good. All right, now, so before we get to the actual uh, uh, you and AOC get-together, let's just talk about the parade in general. Uh, we watch a lot of it at home. It looked like a spirited, great time. So before you get to the controversy, how'd the parade go down for you yesterday? Yeah, so it was, the whole thing was fantastic, I think. I was there with my daughter. We um, we were supporting. Uh, we were invited to march with the Guardian Angels because uh, I really support what Curtis has been doing with, uh, in particular, the the tackling of gang violence in the 14th district with MS-13 and Jackson Heights and whatnot. And being that this year was the 40th anniversary of the Guardian Angels, I thought, hey, I accepted the invitation. Thank you so much for inviting me and my family. And it was great to be there. And it was, you know, a lot of people may not know this, but. Uh, oftentimes, you know, there's, a, there's a college in New York, Boricua College, and uh, the term Boricua comes from the term Borinquen, which is an indigenous term to the people that inhabited Puerto Rico. And the interesting part of that is it, it, the literal translation is, is loud and proud. So when you say there was, it was a spirited event, that's ideally what part of the culture of being Puerto Rican is all about, is being proud of where you come from. And I think that's where I get my patriotism from, because... I'm loud and proud about my country, the United States of America, and I think it's just part of our culture altogether. Rich Valdez, you say that uh, more people see you in the district where she represents than they see her, and she's the uh, congresswoman who represents the district. But doesn't her most effective work take place down in Washington, D.C.? I would think it it only takes place in Washington, D.C. if it actually represents the people. So case in point, she comes out of the gate swinging with a massive piece of legislation known as the Green New Deal. Problem is, this legislation falls flat with its Senate counterpart, known um, as the Green New Deal, with uh, zero yes votes when they took a vote. And the reason being, this didn't represent the people of the district. The issues there are jobs, and when she had a chance to come out on jobs, she came out on the side of saying no thanks and sabotaged 25,000 jobs that Amazon was drinking or bringing into Queens. So I, I think her record in that regard is, is not as strong as it ought to be, and I think the, the constituents are aware of that. All right, well, listen, now that Bernie brought her up, let's get to it. This is the big story. You do see her at the parade yesterday. This is what we've read. Uh, you were being very gentlemanlike. You wanted to walk over and, uh, exp- and exchange pleasantries despite the political differences, and you're going to run against her. And when given that opportunity, she did not exactly come up big. Give us the exact play-by-play of exactly what happened. Sure. So, you know, here's how it goes. So I'm walking with, uh, with the Guardian Angels group and, and, uh, and my daughter, and we're walking, you know, along the side to catch up with the main group because they were, you know, th- there's a staging area where they get together where each group waits until it's their turn to, to march. So I'm walking in that direction, and we stopped for a moment because Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney uh, from New York's 12th District had stopped and uh, said hello to Curtis. And I'd never met her before, but she was gracious enough. She said hello to me. And, and I thought, oh, great. We're, continue- we're about to continue walking. Somebody handed me a, a, uh, a drink, some sort of drink they were promoting. It was like a, a soda. So uh, I took a sip of that. And at that moment, um, I see that AOC is marching with a, a large Puerto Rican banner that says, Todos Juntos. 
right, which means uh, all together. And there was a, a small caption under it that said, los de aquí, los de allá, which means those that are here and those that are there. And I, I took it as a message of solidarity, saying, you know, all of us that are, are uh, related to Puerto Rico and are supporting Puerto Rico, especially in this post-Hurricane um, Maria time, I thought it was a really nice message of unity. So in that same spirit of solidarity, I thought, okay, let me um, walk over, because I saw her break away from the pack she was marching with behind the banner and walked over. I was on the right side of Fifth Avenue, and she was on the left side of Fifth Avenue. And she broke away from the pack and was shaking hands with some people that were behind the barricades. So I said, you know, let me quickly walk over there and do that. So I did. And just to reiterate, you were walking over to be nice. You liked what she had there. You liked the message of solidarity. You had no intention, for example, of fighting with her, talking about politics. You really wanted to kind of be one yesterday. I was going to go over and introduce myself and say, hey, look, we haven't met. And, you know, I I just want to meet you and say hello. I love what you're doing with this Bolo Junto because I thought that was really cool. And and given the opportunity, I would have said, hey, look, we've reached out to your office several times and we've tweeted to have an exchange on my podcast. This is America, which uh, you can find on WABCradio.com. And she um, she's neglected to respond. But it was in no way I was going to pull out the gauntlet and, you know, and challenge her to a duel or anything like that. It was, you know, 30 seconds tops, but I uh, didn't get the chance as I kind of made eye contact with her. She uh, literally kind of jerked her hand back to the person she was shaking hands with and literally sprinted across to the right side of Fifth Avenue. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that. You know, <laughs> I said to myself, I mean, she can run from these issues, but, you know, with the election coming, she's not going to be able to hide from these facts. Well, you know, she obviously didn't want you and her to be in a picture together. At this point, Rich Valdez, who's running in the primary against Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and met her, or tried to meet her yesterday at the parade, she views you probably as a stalker. You have her rattled. You're in her head, and you've already nicknamed her uh, the acronym AOC, uh, All Out Crazy. So she's, uh, you know, she's, she knows of your existence, and she doesn't want anything to do with you and give you any, elevate you in any way, shape, or form. You know that, right? Yeah, well, that's unfortunate, because, I mean, I think civic discourse has to be what it is. I mean, uh, Ten minutes earlier, we had, you know, exchanged pleasantries with Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, and there was no issue there. She's, she's a Democrat from New York. It, 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 she's a woman. I mean, because that's some of the criticism I'm hearing is that, you know, wow, how could you go over there and, and try to talk to a, a, a woman politician, which I find to be absurd. I don't think it's the, the type of climate that we should live in where we're kind of afraid or we have some sort of ambivalence towards speaking to elected officials. That's what they're elected to do is represent, right? She's representative Cortez. So as a representative, you should be able to speak with the people. And being that she was shaking hands with people, I didn't think it was inappropriate in any way. No, not at all. No. So, so when you consider the fact that you're Mr. Call Screener and you're um, very influential in the success of the great one himself, Mark Levin, how much of Levin's show later on tonight here on WABC will center around this um, encounter, which never happened between you and AOC? Well, you know, I do my best to, to keep my, my work with Levin focused on national issues and things that, that are of national importance. And being that this is a local race, I don't know if it's something that will be in our show rundown. But should he want to discuss it, I mean, obviously I'm open to it. Uh, then, let, 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 me, let me rephrase it. Are you hoping... Praying to God that <laughs> that, <laughs> well, that, I mean, that I would love, I would appreciate because Mark has called her out. I mean, I, I like to joke around and say, you know, her her communist grandfather, uh, Bernie Sanders, he uh, has been called out by Mark to debate and crickets. So Mark said, "All right, well, if Bernie won't come on any of my shows, then maybe um, you know, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez would come on the show." And we've also heard crickets there, and I've invited her on my show. And, in fact, in April when we launched a podcast, the uh, one of the first interviews I did, the first interview I did was with uh, with Juliet Huddy and Curtis Lewa. And Juliet was trying to get in touch and tweeting at the office and calling the office and you know, using her journalistic background, trying to really make a contact. And at the time, there was no district office in Queens or the Bronx. Since then, they've opened a part-time office in Queens, there's still no representation in the Bronx. And I think when you have no representation in your community, you're supposed to be representing that community in Washington. So that's why I'm giving such 
serious attention and I should say careful consideration, yeah. thoughtful consideration to really, really um, stepping into this. Well, listen, I think uh, Levin's chances of getting Alexandro Casio cortez are about as good as him getting Raul Castro <laughs> to come on the show, and yours as well. But, Rich Valdez, we are out of time, and uh, we wish you the very best. Keep it up, man. Just, uh, you know, keep harassing her. Keep not harassing Great. her, but, yeah, but stay on her tail. Things. I will, Bernie. Thank you. And, and the, uh, we have a few things that I'm, I'm going to be sharing in the next couple hours or maybe by tomorrow. Uh, at Rich Valdez on Twitter, so um, keep your eyes peeled. Right, we will retweet it. Okay, Rich, great job. Uh, you do get the 940 replay. Congratulations. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. Thanks, guys. All I right, buddy. It. Enjoy it. Rich Valdez, Mr. Call Screener, of course, for Mark Levin. We'll take a short break. The Shrewsbury Bicycle Blitz is next. Mets and Yankees. I'll meet tonight in the Bronx. NBA could be over tonight. NHL, we've got a game seven. And guess what happens this week? Tiger back at Pebble Beach. All that and more coming your way. Bernie and Sid in the morning, 77 WABC.